Hello, hello, hello. My name is Jewel Lennart and welcome to Lunch with Jewel. We are going to talk about something important today and that is something that every entrepreneur or um, creator must master and that is sales. So, um, and what we're going to talk about are the five decisions. There's five decisions that a potential buyer makes every single time you interact with them. You originally, you you probably think there's just one perhaps, right? They make one decision. Are they going to buy or are they not going to buy? But it's really five decisions. The first decision they make is about you. Okay. Do they trust you? And what is your judgment like? Right? So, well, let's go through the five first and then we'll get into detail. First, they're they're going to make five decisions. They're going to make a decision about you. They're going to make a decision about your company. They're going to make a decision about your product or service. They're going to make a decision about um, the value that they're getting for, um, you know, the price. And then they're going to make a decision about the timing. And when they make the, the right, if we can properly help step a potential customer through the buying cycle and the decisions that they need to make, we're more likely to increase the number of sales that we actually make as we bring people into our business community or our artist community. Okay. So let's talk a little bit. Let's unpack just a little bit. These five buying decisions that are made with every potential buyer. The first buying decision is about you. They want to know two things about you. Can they trust you? And What's your judgment like? So do you have integrity? And these are little, it, they can assess this in many ways. Like I look for, did you show up on time? Right? Did you follow up? Did you return my call? To me, these are all like um, kind of flags, red flags about integrity and how I'm going to operate with you because I'm looking for how is this relationship between you and I that we're going to enter into? How is it going to flow? If you won't return my phone call in the beginning when we're just getting to know each other, or if you're late for appointments in the beginning when we're just starting to interact in a business relationship, chances are you're not going to get better down the road, right? So I'm looking at that. The second thing that I'm looking for about you is your judgment. Are you really, do you really care about the success of their business or of the solution of their problem? Do you really care about it so that you're not just trying to sell them something, you're trying to help them solve a problem? This is the difference between, you know, what people call hardcore sales and consultative selling, because ultimately when you're doing sales the right way, you're helping to solve a problem for someone, right? And so they're looking, when they're looking at you, they're looking to say, is this person a person of integrity and can I trust them to really take my, my interest at heart and match me with a solution that solves my problem? Okay. The second thing they're looking at is they're looking at your company. They're looking to say, okay, hmm, can they really do what they, you know, can they really do what they say to do? They're going to do, are they trustworthy? Are they credible? Do they offer um, this benefit? Have they done it before? I mean, these are different things that they're looking at about your company. This is why it's so important, especially um, as a, a small business owner or an artist. It's like you've got to um, establish that doing business with you is going to be easy. It's going to be a simple solution. It's not going to be complex. You're not going to add more problems than you solve in the implementation of it. So for example, if you're an entrepreneur and you deliver some type of online solution, say let's take website, like everybody's been, been through that. Is it going to be smooth? Is the person going to walk you through the process? Do you understand that you're going to need to provide content or do they just say, okay, yeah, sign you up, take your money. And then all of a sudden they say, oh, you're done. Here's your website. And you don't have content. Right. You're like, oh, wait, um, I didn't know I need to do this. I didn't know I need to do that. It's too many decisions to make. Ah, I don't want to do it. Right. Like I want someone to solve my problem and make it easy, easy. Do you have can I fill out the information online? Um, are you going to set up appointments for me so that I can get my questions answered? Are you going to return my calls? Do you um, do you respond to my email? These are all things that that establish the credibility of the company itself in ease. And the biggest way to me, the biggest way that this comes through is in ease of doing business. This is a big thing, right? This is why, you know, I even, you know, I focus on, you know, you'll hear me say, you know, hey, boss up, 
take names. It's because that first impression makes a big deal with people and how they view your company. If they call and they don't get a professional voicemail or they text you and they don't get a response back, all of that is ticks against your company and you, right? So the second thing is that's about your company. The third thing they're asking questions about is your product or service. Is your product or service going to really solve their problem? Is your product or service quality? Are they going to have challenges with it? Or is it something that they can really, they've, they've seen some social proof, like somebody's tried it or, or they, they get some type of guarantee. They're looking for, you know, is this product going to really solve product or service going to really solve my problem? Right. And that's the thing you usually think is the only thing that is in the sales process in the buy decision, but really it's not right. It's the third thing. So we've got, we talked about, you know, they're making a decision about you. So they, they meet you. They say, oh, yeah, they're nice. I like them. Let's let's go forward. OK, well, tell me about your company. Well, what else? You know, what does it do? Blah, 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 blah. OK, you made it to step three. Step three is the project service. And yeah, you know, I think this can really help me out. I really can see how, you know, some problems this can solve for me. Then fourth is price. Now, I I kind of have gone back and forth on this issue of whether or not to tell people how much stuff costs. Because I personally hate it when I'm I'm looking for something, a particular thing, and I go to a website or um and I and I can't see how much it is. Like you know, I gotta fill out a form and then I gotta give you my email address and and then you know you still don't tell me how much it is. I can't find it anywhere on your website what the pricing is. I hate that. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. But the challenge is that when you give someone the price up front, you haven't had a chance to establish the value. Potentially, you haven't had a chance to, uh, um, to assess or present to them the value of what you offer. So that a lot of times people use price as, a, as an excuse to say no, when really the problem is not um, the price. The challenge is that you haven't established the value uh, for them to release their money, right? So, um, so there's two schools of thought. Oh, I'll say two, two kind of sides of this. One is just tell them how much it is. And then, you know, they can decide if it's a value for them or not. See you later. Or you don't tell them how much it is until you've established the value. Right. And so it's better to do that. This is a little bit easier to do when you're doing face to face selling, like if you have a consultation or you're on the phone with someone, it's much easier to, to make it through those first three buying decisions before you get to price because you're able to have a conversation. So when you finally get to the point of price, you know, it's a no brainer. It's like, oh, wow, it's only how much? Oh, sure. Sign me up. Right. But if you don't have value established or if they haven't seen the value and then that it's all about price and then it becomes a commodity. And, you know, that's not necessarily what your business is about. So it's important to master um, how you present yourself, your company and your product and service. So that by the time you get to their fourth decision, which is how much is it that you've already established the value. OK. And then um, so I say we did uh, you, your company. We talk price. OK, the fifth one is timing. Is the timing right? OK, so depending on what size a uh, client or customer you're dealing with, you know, if you're say you're an artist and you're in the art fair, um, the timing has to be like right there, because chances are when somebody walks away from your event, the chances that I'm calling you up and say, yeah, you know, that painting I saw, you know, um, two weeks ago it's when you were at the fair, I want that now. That's not going to happen. So you have to establish some type of urgency in, in the in the event space or or if you're on a, even if you're on a call as, a, as an entrepreneur, you have to establish some type of urgency. It could be around pricing. It could be around um, uh, a number of pieces you have available or a sale that's expiring or something like that. But you have to establish a reason for them to act now versus later because. Um, it might not be a good decision for them potentially, or put it this way, it might not be urgent for them to make that decision today, right? Like for me, when I established when I um, established my platform, I had a sense of urgency because I sucked at follow up, and I was like, you know what? I gotta solve this problem. If I don't solve this problem, I'm gonna be in big trouble. Yeah. Oh, what does it do? It does this. It does this. Oh, okay, cool. You know what? Sign me up. Like I had a sense of urgency, but you know what? 
most of your clients are not going to be there. Most of them are going to be like, you're going to, you know, prospect them, reach out to them. And they're going to be like, oh, well, yeah, you know, that sounds like good. Mm, that maybe could help me. But, oh, well, you know what? Let me take a look at your website and I'll call you. Right. You don't want to go there because they won't make a decision. Life is full of too many things that are going on. Most people don't want to make a decision. So it's your responsibility to help them with the timing by establishing some type of urgency when you're having that connection. So this went longer than I thought, but I hope it was good meeting information for you. So again, the five buying decisions that every um, lead is making when you're having, when you're meeting with them, the first thing, the decision they're making is, do can they trust you and do you really care about solving their problem that's about you the second one is about your company are you going to be able to deliver is it going is there going to be an ease of delivery is it easy to do business with you that's about your company the product or service they're going to make a decision about that is this product or service really going to do what it says it's going to do can it really help me with the problem that i'm trying to solve the fourth thing that decision they're making is the value when they, you start talking about price, it's like, okay. And the, they're making a decision. They're making a choice between choosing your product or service, doing nothing at all, or choosing something else. And something else doesn't have to be a competitive pro, pro, uh, product. It could be a decision. Well, you know, I could do this or I could sign up for my, you know, movie subscription, right? It could be, do I want to allocate resources to this thing right now? And then finally, the fifth thing is going to be timing. Do I, well, that was kind of timing on the fourth thing, but do I want to you know, now that I've decided I like you, I like your, your company, I think your product can solve my problem. I see the value of it. Do I need to do it today? And that is where the fifth decision they're making is, is there a reason for me to do this today or can it wait? And that um, falls on, the, well, they all fall on you, but that's a big one where it helps to establish some urgency. So I hope this was helpful for you. It um, definitely is a foundation for every entrepreneur or artist that's out there um, looking to get new customers. Um, then, so if you have any questions about this, always, you can always text me at the number below and I'm happy to answer a quick question here or there. And I, if it's helpful for you, then definitely share the information. I love it when people share the information that I provide because I really believe in the value of it. And I will see you next time on Lunch with Jewel. Bye for now.